Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat. In today's video, we're gonna do an overview on the 1845 RX lathe. Now, this is one in a series of lathes that we make. And of course, the iron for the different machines that we make is virtually the same iron that we used when we made the SX models. But of course, all of our new lathes now come with the great Prototrack RX control. So I'm gonna show you a bit of the information on how the control works, show you a little bit about how the machine itself works, and some other things just to get you a little bit more of the knowledge that you need to have. So first of all, with our 1845 model, of course that means it's got an 18 inch swing, 45 between centers. Uh, this model comes with a 10 horsepower spindle. It comes with the uh, D16 size nose. It has a two and uh, 0.36 uh, inch interior clearance through the spindle. Um, it also has a high and low gear, which I think is important because sometimes when you're comparing this model to a smaller model, you might wanna have that low gear to get a little bit more torque when you're doing things like uh, slow RPM type of jobs and things like that. Okay, now of course there's also the 1630 model. Uh, there's also the 2470 and our newest lathe, which is the 30 by 120 inch lathe. And of course they all come with different horsepowers and, and work envelopes and all that, but virtually they work the same way. Um, you'll notice in the video here that we're using a standard tool post where I'm the tool changer. Um, for tool room applications, a lot of times that's all we need or sometimes it even works better. And then of course you'll see on the 1630 that we have our four position turret on there that we make here at Track Machine Tools. And on our 2470, you'll see that we have the eight position turret on there as well. Both of those turrets come in three quarter and one inch tool sizes. So depending on which model you're gonna put it on, you're gonna choose accordingly, okay? So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna do a little bit of an explanation of the RX controls. If you're one of the people that's seeing it for the first time, just give you some of the high points on how it works. And then after that, I'm gonna actually show you how to do some of the functions in DRO mode, show you how to set up tools, show you what the programming is like, run a piece part, and kind of answer all the questions that you might have here. Okay, so to get us started, first of all, I'm going to talk about the control here. And if you've not seen the RX control, first of all, it's a little larger than what you saw in the past with the SX model. Um, it is a touchscreen model now, so you have a lot more functions that are capable with the touchscreen than we had before, or at least they're a lot easier to use. So first of all, you'll notice here that I'm in the DRO mode, and here's my mode screen on the right-hand side, and it's got the same modes of operation that all of our controls have. The one big difference is there's no button that says mode because I don't need to use a mode button to transfer from one mode to the other. So now to go to DRO, say to program, I can just select program, it's right there right away. If I go to setup, it's there right away, okay? So I can switch from one to another and it always remembers where it was when I come back. The next thing I wanna talk about is the information panel and that goes along the left-hand side of the screen. And that's basically giving me all the new functions that I didn't have in the older versions of controls. So starting at the top, we have a status button. In the status button, that's gonna tell me whether I'm working in inches or metric. It's gonna tell me what version of software and is in there, it's gonna tell me what options I've purchased and give me the ability to turn some of them on and off. The next button underneath it is the tool table and I'm gonna come back to this in a minute but just basically I wanna to touch on the fact that now what we have is an actual tool library that we can save our tools in. So when I'm using something like a manual tool post, I have the ability to keep almost 100 tools in my library that are all set up and know their offsets from one to the other. The great part about that is every program that I make can start out with tool number one, tool number two, and so on, and then just assign the tools from the library to replace tool number one, two, three, et cetera. So it makes it much easier than have to remember which tool is it that I wanna to use today. Okay, so I'll show how that works in a moment. I wanna talk a little bit about the EPA. The EPA is short for Enhanced Prototrack Assistance. And what it does is it gives me basically the whole manual along with a lot of other very helpful items inside of the control. So when I select EPA, it's going to ask me by topics, what is it I'm trying to learn? And then it'll give me pictures, illustrations, and videos to help teach the person how to do that particular function in the control. Very useful, and we're going to continue to add to it and upgrade it as the control matures. All right. Um, underneath that is the math help button, which is the same as it's been in any of our controls, but it does help you figure out intersection points or tangencies and things like that that are not on your print. 
Um, below that, there's a button that says defaults. So this is a big deal. The defaults, if I actually push that button, you're gonna see that a flyout window comes in here and I have everything that I need in here to set up for the way that I want a machine. And one of the things I wanna point out up here at the very top, you'll see that it says user profile and it has my name in it. Um, you can set up as many user profiles as you need. So you might set them up for different people and their machining styles, or better yet, you might set it up for different material types where you wanna have certain RPMs or feed rates or finish cuts, things like that that you wanna put in that default for stainless steel and then another one for aluminum or another one for copper and so on and so forth. So this allows me to set up the way I want a machine and then when I start programming, it'll autofill a lot of those things like your finish cut sizes and stuff like that, okay? Um, the next button down there is really nice. It has a keyboard now that's very useful. Our older models used to kind of depend on you plugging a keyboard in to use it. And now you actually have a keyboard that you'll see if I open it up here, that I can move it around the screen for wherever I need it to be. I can expand it to show the numbers and the symbols and things like that. And they have an ink and an abset button in there. If I push that button again, it'll close. And last but not least down here, I've got a calculator now, which is also very handy because now when I have to calculate something for my program, I can do so and follow up with the ink set or the ab set button. It'll enter it right into my program and I can move on. Also, if I double tap the very top, it turns it into a scientific calculator to help me with my trig functions and some of that other stuff. Okay. So that kind of gives you a pretty quick overall idea on how that stuff works. And the next thing I want to talk about is actually how the tool table works and, uh, and show you some of the DRO functions that are in here, okay? So I'm gonna go into the fact that, first of all, I've got a program in here already. You can see the part here and you see it in my print in the corner. And I've got a shape that I've got to cut out of a three inch piece of uh, aluminum here. And then once I cut it out, I've got a thread relief grief bit in here. And then I'm gonna thread this area right here that's an inch and a quarter uh, thread with 12 threads per inch. Okay, so now that you see how my program works, I wanna first of all explain the options button. So notice that button highlighted now. And in each individual event, there's gonna be certain options that I can change that'll be different than what I did in my defaults. Okay, so for instance, in here, if I don't wanna work in surface footage, I could change it to RPM. Or if I wanna work in uh, inches per minute instead of thousands per rev. Those are the kind of things that are in here. Add a Z finish cut if I didn't have one already. So with each individual event, I can use the options to change it. And the next time I go to a new event, it's gonna go back to the defaults. So the defaults are for everything and the options allow me to adjust the defaults per event, okay? All right, so let's go to the tool table and talk a little bit about that. You'll see when I select the tool table, that up here at the top it says my part zero is set because I've already done that part, okay? You'll see I've got four tools in my program and none of them are set. And then you'll see I have three tools in my library, three of which are already set up. So I've got my right turn face tool set up, my grooving tool and my threading tool. But you'll also see that in my program, I have a cutoff tool that I've added at the end of this to show how the new cutoff feature works. Okay, so I have to set that tool up. So first of all, let me explain this. I've made a program, and so now I'm in the tool list and I'm gonna say, okay, how am I gonna do this? What tools am I going to use? Well, I'm gonna use this tool number here that I have tool number 101, and I'm gonna say that's gonna be my first tool in my program. So you see that it transferred it up here and now it says set. Before I go any farther, let me remind you this too. My tools that are in my library start at number 101 and go to 199. My tools that I put in my programs start at number one and go to number 99. So that's how I differentiate the two. When I'm in manual mode with or without a program, I can call up a library tool. It'll know the offsets and therefore allow me to machine by hand accurately. Okay, so to keep going with this, I've got an OD groove tool right here. Tell it that's tool number two. And then I've got my thread tool. Right here is tool number three. And that gives me my first three tools, but my fourth tool is not in my library. So I'm gonna show you how to do that tool setup, right? So you can see that all the information is already here. I just basically have to set it up. So when I go here, you'll see down here, there's a button that says tool setup. And it draws me a picture of my groove tool, or I'm sorry, my cutoff tool. And it tells me to tell it where it's at in the X and the, y, or X and the Z axis. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn on my spindle and then I'm just gonna take a cut with the X. And in this case, I'm just gonna to touch the diameter because I know already where I'm at. 
So I'm going to change from tool number one to my cutoff tool. Just bring it in till it bumps and now I'm at three inches. So you see that goes from not set to set. And now I'm going to touch off the end of my cutoff tool. You see I'm touching the edge, but in this case I've got to tell it the width of the tool. So I'm actually at .123, that's the width of my tool, and you'll see when I push return that now the fourth tool is set up. What I can do now is while that's highlighted, I can add that to the library, and then I can give a library tool, in this case 104, and the next time I make a program that asks for a cutoff tool, all I have to do is transfer it like I did the first three. So that gives you a little bit of an idea how the tool setup works, right? So I'm going to close that window. And now I'm going to show you a few features in the DRO mode and how some of the manual stuff works in here, okay? So you're going to notice here that if I go back to DRO, I can use the jog stick to move the uh, table around or the saddle around. And then in here I've got my functions that you're all used to, the power feed, the go-to feature, which is part of the electronic hand wheels, uh, return home, the do one functions, and resetting my max RPM. Let's talk about RPM first. When you turn on the machine, it asks for a max RPM. On this particular machine, it's 2,500, so it will automatically be in there and ask me if I want to adjust that. But if there's any other time in the process where I don't want it to run at max RPM, I would just select that button and punch in a different number and it'll tap out at that number. Okay? But what I really want to show you here is how to use the do one functions. Because the do one functions on one of our lathes basically gives you the ability to replace the compound that would be on your manual lathe and let you do some of those same functions like cutting tapers or chamfers or angles. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to position this thing over here to a certain point. So I'm going to bring it into Z0. First, I got to tell it the right tool. So, tool number one. Okay, so I'm going to bring it into Z0. And then I'm going to bring it into 2 inches 800 thousandths. Right there. Okay, so I'm going to turn my spindle on, go to do one, and say I want to cut a taper. It's going to suggest 45 degrees, which in this case is fine, but I can put in any angle I want. When I hit the set key and I turn one of the hand wheels, it's going to consistently run at 45 degrees in this direction. If I shut that off just so you can hear me better. If I go back in the opposite direction, it will automatically disconnect when it gets to the point where I first started. So that's one of the features I have. If you look, I also have the ability to cut any radius or any fillet. So all I do is put the tool at where the beginning of the radius or fillet is, select that item, tell it what size radius or fillet I want to cut, and then when I turn the hand wheel, it will do 90 degrees of that particular radius, whether it's inside or outside, and I can adjust accordingly. Once I push return, it's back to X is X and Z is Z. So back to the normal way of using it. So this should give you some a little bit more idea on how that part of it works, okay? The next thing I want to show you is a little bit about the program that I have in here and how it worked, okay? So I've got um, a program which is, it's a little bit complex if I had to make it in a manual lathe, but like a lot of our programs that we show you, they're designed to give you the best idea on what the machine and the control can do, right? So this particular part would be tough to make by hand, and probably time consuming to make in a turning center and most likely your turning center has better things to do to make you money. So the idea of our lathe is to be able to make one complicated part really quickly. So I'm going to go back to the program mode and you'll see here that I'm in the very beginning and I'm starting out with what we call a cycle event. A cycle event allows me to fill in all my feed speeds and pertinent information for how to make the part and then describe the part piece by piece. So you'll see as I swipe forward, it highlights each piece. So I've got a turning event, a turning event with a chamfer, a turning event again, an angled, another one, another one, and eventually I complete the shape of my part. After that, I use a position event, which describes the material. So you'll see it comes back to the corner of the material, and one more time to close the box, and that tells it where it's going to remove all that material. 
After that, I have a grooving event to do this thread relief here, and I've described it as an OD groove. I give my major and minor diameters and the four points on the corners in Z so that it tells it whether it's a square groove or a tapered groove. I can also chamfer or radius the top and bottom of it and put in my feeds and speeds. Last but not least, I described the thread by the OD. It automatically calculates the minor. And then just my uh, Z beginning and Z end, what the pitch of the thread is, how many roughing passes, and so on. So that's my completed program. Okay, so once I've got the program done, set up my tools, now I'm actually ready to make that part. And when I go to run mode, um, I want to also tell you guys just for demonstration purposes that we've disabled the door guard so that you can see what I'm actually doing. But normally in the run mode, I can run it with the door open in tracking or manual. But as soon as I go to CNC mode, the door has to be closed for safety purposes. Okay, so I'm here in the run mode. It's asking me whether I want to start at the beginning or anywhere in the middle. I'm going to go to start at beginning. I'm going to let it process the tool path. And then once it gets done there, it says, when you're ready, push go, right? So when I push go, it's going to go home. It's going to remind me to put tool number one in there. Tell me what it is. Tell me to start the spindle. I've already got it in here, so I'm going to start the spindle. And then before I do anything else, I'm going to always be safe like I am in every video you've seen me run. I'm going to use tracking, okay? So I'm going to start the spindle here, and I'm just going to track this thing over. And I just want to make sure that I'm in the right place and everything's working correctly, okay? So then it's going to probably throw chips all over the place. So I'm going to step out of the way a little bit as it's running, just so you know. But I'm going to hit stop, go to CNC run, and then push go. Now for sake of time and everything else, I'm not gonna cut the whole part, but I wanted to get this far to show you one of the other really cool features that we've added. Anytime I push stop, there's a button that says chip clear. When I push chip clear, I can override where my tool is so that I can do things like get these strings out of the way, right? And then it'll also allow me to go right back to where I was when I'm finished. So I could make my changes in here, get the chips out of the way, whatever. And then I have two choices. I can push resume, turn the spindle on and push go, and it'll automatically go back to where it was. Or I can also use tracking, do the same thing, and it's still gonna know right where it was and continue into the machining part of this, okay? So normally, if you watch any of my other videos, you're gonna see the entire part be cut, but for a reason where we only have so much time here, I know you guys know what it looks like when it's actually cutting. So it's more a matter of how everything else with the control works. Now, I would tell you that normally you would probably want to uh, check out all the different models and learn a little bit more about them. This one explains more about the 1845, and I hope it helps you get a little bit better idea on whether this is the right product for you. And if it does, great. If you have other questions, then I would tell you that maybe what you should do is reach out to your local track rep and let him tell you the difference between the different controls and do a full demonstration so that you have a better idea on everything that our different models of our lathes work. As always, I thank you for watching and don't forget to keep on tracking.